Hey, everybody. I wanted to give an introduction to the Hausdorff and Gromov Hausdorff distances between metric spaces. So let's start with the Hausdorff distance. Let X and Y be two subsets of the same metric space. So here, X is drawn in blue. It's this, this curve. Um, y is drawn in red. It's this finite set of points sampled near the curve. And they're both in the same metric space, which here is just the plane. Okay. And I want to define for you what the Hausdorff distance between these two uh, sets, X and blue and Y and red, is. So the Hausdorff distance is the um, infimum over all epsilons, such that if you thicken Y by epsilon, it contains X. And if you thicken X by epsilon, it contains Y. Let's, let's draw this. So first, let me show you thickenings of Y. Okay, so why is this set of red points? Okay, I'm going to select it. Whoops. I'm going to select Y just so that I can, in a moment, thicken it. Okay, so Y is a set of red points. Okay, and, and X in blue is not contained in Y, right? There's points on this loop that are not contained, you know, in this finite set of red points. But what if I thicken these red points? So I make these red points a little bit larger, a little bit larger, a little bit larger, a little bit larger. Uh, I don't think X is quite yet contained, but now X in blue is certainly contained in, in this thickening of Y, okay? So I'm showing you various epsilon thickenings of Y, and I look at the smallest epsilon such that X is finally contained in these epsilon thickenings. I could thicken further, but there's no need. I had already contained X by this thickening. All right, so that's, that's what this notation means. The epsilon means I'm looking at those epsilon thickenings of the red points Y, and I'm looking at the smallest epsilon so that X is contained in the thickenings. But I also need to look at the in the reverse direction. So let's also consider X. And we also need to consider thickenings of X so that Y is contained in the thickenings of X. So I can thicken X and the blue curve is getting larger and larger. All right, and eventually maybe there, right? Once I thicken X by enough, then X contains Y. All right, so to get the Hausdorff distance, you find the smallest epsilon, so that if you thicken Y by epsilon, you contain X, and dually, if you can thicken X by epsilon, you contain Y. And then just take, um, um, yeah, then just take the smallest such epsilon that, that works for both X contained in the thickening of Y and Y contained in the thickening of X. All right, so it's some notion of how far apart X and Y are. Notice that I'm really using the fact that X and Y are two subsets of the same metric space. You know, X and Y are really pre-aligned for you. You know, they're, they're either nearby each other or not nearby each other. And that determines how much you need to thicken. All right, the Gromov Hausdorff distance is what we're going to see next. And the Gromov Hausdorff distance will be defined um, not only for subsets of the same metric space, but just for two arbitrary metric spaces. So let's do that. The Gromov Hausdorff distance between two metric spaces, X and Y, that don't need to necessarily be aligned in a larger space. So the, the Gromov Hausdorff distance is we're look, going to look at an infimum over all isometric embeddings, okay, from X into a common space Z and from Y into a common space Z. And then once we have aligned X and Y in some space Z, then we just look at the Hausdorff distance in Z. So Z could be whatever space you want. It could be 3D. It could be hyperbolic space. It could be, you know, the two sphere if 
X and Y both admit isometric embeddings into the two sphere. Um, it could be, Z could be any metric space that, that uh, accepts isometric embeddings from both X and Y, okay? So what you do is you look at the infimum over all such Z and over all such embeddings, okay? So I could embed X in here, or this curve could be somewhere else or somewhere else. I look over all such embeddings, right? I can embed Y here, you know, that's a pretty good embedding, but I also have to consider embeddings where I'm allowed to rotate, right? That's still an isometric embedding, right? So I look at the infimum over all embeddings into some space um, Z. And then once I've embedded, <laughs> I'm having fun trying to draw these embeddings. Okay, then once I've embedded both X and Y, I just compute the Hausdorff distance that we saw on the previous slide. So the upshot is that the Hausdorff distance requires your spaces to be aligned already in some common metric space, but you can define a Gromov Hausdorff distance between arbitrary metric spaces, even if they're not already aligned in any sense. I should say that um, the Hausdorff distance it, it is in fact an honest to goodness uh, metric on all non-empty compact subsets of a metric space. So the reason why we need this um, compact assumption is if let's say we're in the real line and X is the real line and Y is a set of all rationals. Well, it turns out their Hausdorff distance is zero even though they're not the same um, subset. So, so that's why we need this compact assumption. You know, you want to get a uh, distance, a metric, where the distance between two sets is zero if and only if the sets are equal, right? unless you restrict. Um, so yeah, this gives you a metric when you look at non-empty compact subsets of a common metric space. And the Gromov-Hausdorff distance um, gives you a metric when you restrict attention to um, compact metric spaces. So the same example works again. Uh, the the Gromov-Hausdorff distance between the real line and the set of rationals is zero, even though they're not the same metric space. Um, but if you restrict attention to compact isometry classes of metric spaces, then you get a metric. All right. Thanks again for your attention. Um, the Hausdorff distance is a nice distance between subsets of a metric space that are already aligned. And the Gromov Hausdorff distance, it's, it's complicated to define, but it essentially um, relies on the definition of the Hausdorff distance. You just have this extra complication of looking at, at the infimum over all isometric embeddings into some common metric space. From there, you use the Hausdorff distance. Hard to compute, but mathematically quite nice.